When I received this parcel, I thought it was a mini washing machine. Well, it kind of looks like one from the picture. But it was actually the new Halot X1 from PO Create. I'd seen this printer floating around on my Facebook feed and it had some really interesting, innovative uh, features in it. So I thought, you know, it would be great if I can have a look at it. And fortunately, PO Create uh, reached out and sent me one. Firstly, it has a crazy 16K Mono Ultra HD screen in it. That's some pretty high resolution. PO Create sent me out the combo version, which includes the automatic feed unit, and that's the input for it. They also came up with this great idea of having the touchscreen at the top of the unit with the USB ports on top of that. That makes it so much easier to actually control and it's at about chest height for me. The Halite X1 also has this really cool lever system to lock the VAT in. I prefer this system over the usual screw knobs. Their quick release plate is a really interesting and innovative design. Rather than have a perforated or laser edge parts, They've got a little system where you twist it and it pushes a plate forward and pops the model off the plate. I'm really keen to find out how well this plate works. Not only is this plate auto leveling, but when the machine starts to print up, it then automatically locks the plate into place. This is the automatic feed unit and this needs to sit either on the side and if your bench is deep enough it can be behind it. As I fumble through the paperwork, it comes with the usual instruction manual for the unit. It's a quick start guide, there's not that much to it. That is the little bracket for the laser module, the two lids that go onto the bottle, they help you connect to the hoses. The unit in my left hand is actually the laser module, and these are the two tubes that go on the inside of the bottle. The AFU is a great looking piece of kit, the only problem is it does take extra space on your workbench, so it increases the footprint. The back folds out and that's where the resin bottle actually sits. It connects to the printer via this USB cable. For the test prints I'll be using some of these um, resin from PO Create, and this is 16K standard resin, so it'll be perfect for the test. They do a whole bunch of different types of resins as well as the water-based versions. I then connect up the banner clip to the top of the bottle and this feeds the resin into the machine. Pretty straightforward and pretty easy to set this piece up. USB lead plus the hose that goes into the back. Pop straight in, no screwing. So far the setup of this machine is really easy. To add the feed unit on the inside of the machine, you need to take off this vac form plate there. Just a couple screws, couldn't be easier. And once that's away, just add the bracket and just replace those two screws that we just screwed out. Be very careful when you return those screws because they are a bit flimsy and they may strip quite easily. Then we just clip in the laser module, then we clip in the little data cable and the feed hose. Now we're ready to power up. The setup process is pretty straightforward. First we need to pick our language which is English and also we're going to go for international because it's international English, I guess. <laughs> Hit next. Of course, we have to agree to their privacy policy and then we pick our network and that bit I did off camera because it's private. Then you can uh, use this QR code and sign up to Creality Cloud. And then there's uh, seven steps to check to make sure you've done everything. First one, we've installed the plate. Yes, we have. Make sure we don't overfill the resin vat, of course. This is just telling us that when the printing starts, the build plate will automatically lock, and when it's finished, it will also automatically unlock. And the final three steps are just telling us how to remove the build plate, how to actually take the model off, which is twisting the build plate, and finally, how to remove the vat. And finally, they wish us happy printing. And that, viewers, is the whole setup process. Let's go and check out some of the settings. And you can see it's a very clean, simple interface. Probably a bit old school for me. I would have preferred some colored icons and things like that. Right in the middle is the Halo box. That's the software uh, that you use with the machine and you can interface via Wi-Fi. You also need to add a password to that area. Under the system settings, you get access to the Wi-Fi. You can set up your Creative Cloud. 
and some of the printer maintenance and you can do your firmware updates. While we're here, let's check out the auto feed unit setup. And I want to adjust the temperature because the default is at 30 degrees Celsius, which is a bit warm. So I'm going to turn it down to 25. The heating process takes a few minutes to get going, but you do have to switch that on manually. And then you can hit the feed in button. Then that starts the unit to fill the vat. But before you can go any further, it will give you a reminder to move that module off the bracket onto the bracket of the vat. Once you've done that, go back and hit continue and the vat will start filling. Now you see that little uh, laser pulse beam there? What it's doing, it's measuring the height of that resin. So it's working out the volume and when it gets to a certain height, it will automatically stop filling. So while that's filling, let's go and check out the software. This is Halot Box. Now I really like this interface. I like how clean it is and this plate looks pretty awesome on the screen so it gives you a really good idea of where you place the models. Now there's a step-by-step -step guide and um, I think it looks like it's going to be pretty simple so let's go and check out how well it works. As always my very first print will be this Dan test plate. This test print will be a great indicator of how well it actually prints. Now our models in place we can either hit the next icon at the top or hit the literally next button. I'm going to leave this as a default mainly because the other one's written in Chinese. I have no idea what it says. And I'm going to keep this at 0.05 layer height. Click on next and we don't have any supports on this so we can just click through that. The next one tells me where the position of everything is and it's just one little piece so it's smack bang in the middle. Nothing fancy there. We then hit next again and right here, I'm going to send this to a USB stick. I'm not going to send it directly to the printer at this stage. I then insert the USB stick into the top of the machine. And like I said earlier, I think it's a brilliant idea the way they've placed this uh, interface screen. First thing we need to do is transfer the model from the USB stick onto the machine. And that gives us a readout of um, all the details of that print. It tells us there's 107 layers, how much resin it uses, and how much time, and in this case, 27 minutes. Once you hit start, the locking feet drop down and lock the build plate into place. The next step is actually asked about the vat rises to the build plate. I think it's really cool. It actually caught me by surprise. Even though I knew he did it, I'd forgotten uh, that he did it until I did it. <laughs> Getting the machine to the point of actually printing something was such an easy procedure. But then it all fell apart. Now at the time I had no idea what was going on here, but the resin started to make an awful mess within the case. There was resin everywhere and it was blowing around. I thought there was some type of fan inside the machine that was blowing the resin against the wall of the cabinet. I contacted PO Create and they told me I had a static electricity issue. Go figure. I had no idea I actually lived in the Bermuda Triangle. I then spent the next 30 minutes cleaning up the cabinet and I did have a solution for that static electricity. This was the next surprise. I couldn't believe how well this Dan test came out. Now remember I set this at 0.05 in layer height and it is so sharp this print the grid on the right hand side there was well it's on the right again there came out really nicely spaced out and also the infinity circle in the middle was really sharp and crisp this came out great even amongst all that mess so i decided to up the ante on my next print so i'm using a model from loot and this is uh, one of their figures which was pre-supported Halo box has the same features as any slicer. You can twist and turn, enlarge, shrink, as well as move the items around the plate. The interface of this uh, software is very intuitive and really quick to pick up. Currently, Tutorbox does not support um, this particular printer. So in this particular case, I decided to go for a layer height of 0 0.03. And I'm going to send the model straight to the printer via the Wi-Fi. 
And that's all Halo Box can do. It cannot control the printer in any other way other than send it the file. To solve my static electricity issue, I moved my printer into my printing room. I'm thinking what may have caused the problem was my old school lighting that I used to film the videos inside my studio. So I took a deep breath, walked out of the room and came back 4 hours and 45 minutes later and was greeted to this. Not a single issue with resin overspill. Now let's check out how well this quick release plate actually works. Now what you need to do is grab those two little levers and just do like a twist action. I think I did it three or four times and they just pop right off. That is a winner for me. And what was even more impressive was the final print. I could not find a single layer line in there. And I even used my magnifying glasses to see if I can spot anything in his knee, in his shoulders, on top of his hat, nothing, no layer lines. Very impressed. One of the big things in all the reviews I do is I want simplicity in the setup. I remember buying my very first printer about five years ago. I spent almost three weeks of troubleshooting before I was able to get my first decent print. Everything else just seemed to fall apart. So when I come across a printer that is as easy as this to uh, set up and get a print out, I'm always going to recommend it. Go and check out some of the previous videos that I've created. And I appreciate your time and I hopefully I'll catch you in the next build. Thank <laughs> you.